This is going to be the first of several videos on basic maintenance on the 451 Smart for 2. I looked online and even like the, the Smart service manual isn't that detailed compared to like Hondas or Toyotas or Subarus or like Mini Coopers or anything else. It's like they try to make it vague so you have to bring it in for service. I also couldn't find many good videos on how to do th this type of maintenance so hopefully this series will help you guys out and you guys can save a couple hundred bucks doing this yourself because it's not that hard to do. I picked this up last week for a little over two grand and I bought this because I started working in downtown San Francisco and it's just a lot easier to find parking with a smaller car. For the materials we have a K&N PS1008 oil filter. There's different ones that you can use as well. I'll list them below. There's also, we also have Mobile One European car formula 0W40 a synthetic oil that's what they recommend there's other ones that you can use depending on your climate as well you can look that up I have a funnel I have a rag I have a catch pan to catch the oil I also have a breaker bar this is a half inch breaker bar and there's a 24 millimeter socket because that's the size of the drain bolt and then I also have this half inch socket as well if I need to tighten it later on and I don't have enough clearance if this is too long. From the back we'll just hit the unlock twice, press this button right here, this opens, there's two tabs, one right here, one right here that will push, and then this whole thing just comes down. Then looking over here we have this mat that we have to lift up, so this just comes up. There's this clip that holds this entire mat in place, so we'll just latch that on like that there's also this piece in the middle that we have to move so we'll flick it up and turn it counterclockwise to loosen it and then this whole thing just comes out and then we can see the engine the great thing about the smart car is that you do not have to jack up the car unless your car is really lowered right in the middle that's the drain bolt that we'll have to remove it's 24 millimeters also there is the oil filter that we'll have to remove right here. I also have my drain pan down here to catch the oil. Since it's on pretty tight, I'm going to use this piece, this extension piece from the floor jack. And I'm just going to stick this in here to get some extension. And hopefully, I can loosen this. Finally broke. You can also twist off this cap so it'll speed up the process. Next, we're going to take off the old oil filter, and since I do not have the wrench for this, the oil filter wrench for this, I'm just going to use some channel locks right here. So before you do this, make sure you have the right oil filter, because this may damage it, but I don't really care since I know that I have the correct one. This is the plug that we took out. Just inspect it for debris and then also wipe it clean. We have the old filter on the right and the new one is on the left. Just want to make sure that these are the same. So make sure that the thread is similar and the sizes are the same. So I know that it is. We're going to take some new motor oil and wipe it onto the new gasket. That way, if it's dry, sometimes it binds up and it doesn't create a good seal and it might start to leak. I used my rag to wipe that area clean. Once it's clean, I'm going to screw on the new filter. And then we just want this hand tight 
as tight as you can by hand. You can also use your rag to get more grip. Doesn't really matter what order you do this in, whether you put the the strain bolt back in first or whether you put the filter in as long as both are plugged in. So this doesn't have to be perfect, it still might be dripping, um, but you just, you're just going to put your cleaned drain plug back in and then wipe off the excess oil from it and then take your 24 millimeter socket and tighten this back up. Typically these are tightened to around 25 foot pounds or if you don't know what that is you can get a torque wrench or just tighten it as much as you can without stripping it. Alright, so I think that's good. Coming back to the top, we're going to put our funnel in. We're going to put 3.7 quarts. This is 5 quarts. So you can see these marks right here. This is quart, this is liter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if we're going to put 3.7, we should have 1.3 left or around this much left. We have about one and a half quarts right now. So we'll just put a little bit more. I mean, you can always put a little bit less and then check the dipstick, but I'm kind of lazy for that. So that's about 1.3. I think we're good. I'll still check the dipstick later. Put this off to the side, cap this. Ideally, in order to check the dipstick, you want to have the car running for a little bit, and then you'll turn it off, let it cool for about 5-20 minutes, and then you'll pull this yellow stick out, clean it to make sure there's no inaccurate readings, plug this back in, pull it out. If you guys can see that right there, the bottom is empty and this is full. So I read online that this is one quart difference so that this would be like 2.7 quarts or less if you have anything below and full would be would be 3.7 quarts. So this is good. I have the car on and I'm just checking for leaks. The plug is not leaking. The filter is not leaking either. So we're good. 